Welcome to the solutions to homework set number 11 for ECE 111. Now in this problem, we kind of take what we did last week and expand it. Now if what we did last week was solve, find the output of a filter when the input is a sine wave. Now when the input is a sine wave, the output is a sine wave. The difference is an amplitude and a phase shift. I can analyze that using complex numbers. For example, right here, if the input is one rating per second, I plug in S equals J1, and I get the gain of the filter. Output is gain times input. If I change the frequency, let's make this two ratings per second. Again, the input's a sine wave, the output's a sine wave. The difference is the amplitude and the phase shift. So sine waves are great. I know what to do with sine waves. If the input's a sine wave, plug in S equals J omega, I get the gain. Output is gain times input. But here's a problem for you. Suppose the input is not a sine wave. Like suppose I have this is my function. It's the red line. It's periodic, but it's not a sine wave. What happens when you run that through a filter? Again, this is VisSim, uh, similar to Simulink in MATLAB. In VisSim or Simulink, I can solve. I get that blue line. How do I come up with the equation for that blue line? That's this week's homework. Um, so to do that, we use a thing called Fourier transforms, a Fourier series. What I do is I change the problem. I know what to do with sine waves. If the input is not a bunch of sine waves, I turn it into a sine waves using a curve fitting. So let's start out. Start out with your function in MATLAB. So here's t, x of t, plot, and you get this function. That's your input. Now let's do a curve fit. That's not a bunch of sine waves, so I don't know what to do with it. Well, I can curve fit anything. Suppose I took that function and chose this to be my basis, a power series. Well, we've done that before. Choose your basis to be 1, this term, t, t squared, t cubed, and so on. That's my basis function. Solve for my constants using least squares. That's the inverse of b transpose b, p trans transpose x. We've done that many times. And I get my coefficients. So there's your a0, a1, a2. And if I plot them with my function, plot t versus x in blue, t versus my curve fit in red, it uh, well doesn't work real well. Add more terms, it'll get closer. So again, it's a curve fit. The problem with this basis is I can't do much with it. I don't know what to do with this basis once I have it. Well, let's try a different basis. I like sine waves. I know what to do with sine waves. Let's choose x of t to be in this form. Find the co constants a and b to make this roughly equal to x. Well, that's the same problem we just did. Uh, choose the basis to be 1, cosine of t, sine of t, cosine 2t, sine 2t, cosine 3t, sine 3t. Ch pick that to be the basis. Solve for the constants using least squares, inverse of b transpose b, b transpose x. You know, we use this a lot. It's very common. And you get your curve fit. If I plot the two together, t versus x, t versus the curve fit, um, that's okay. Add more terms, it gets better. The beauty of this basis, though, is that I now have my function in terms of sines and cosines. I like sines and cosines. I know what to do with sines and cosines. That's the whole point behind Fourier series. Take a function that's periodic, but it's not made up of sines and cosines, and curve fit it. Approximate it by a function that is made up of sines and cosines. So this is one way, least squares. A second way of doing it is actually the Fourier series. The Fourier series, the Fourier series is a fancier way of doing it. What the Fourier series does is it uses orthogonality, the property of orthogonality. This is an orthogonal basis. What that means is that I can pull off each basis element one by one just by saying, let's take this guy and hit it with this term, sine of t, and take the average. Now the average of sine is zero. Average of cosine times sine is zero. Average of cosine 2t times sine of t is 0, 0, 0, 0, 
Every term is zero, it's an orthogonal basis, except this one. That sine squared, the average of sine squared is one half. So take the average, I'll get b1 over 2. Multiply by 2 and I clear at the half. I can do that for every basis element, except for a0. a0, we just take the average. So a second way of coming up with 4a coefficients uses the property of orthogonality and just say a0 is the average of x, which is the same thing we got using these squares. a1 is twice the average of x with cosine t. And again, this matches up with the first term. b1 is that term. These are all exactly the same as I had before, just another way of solving it. What that tells you is that the Fourier series is really just a curve fit, except that I'm using a very special, special basis. My bases are sines and cosines. And so kind of notice, you know, either way you're getting the same answer. Doesn't matter how you do it, uh, you're going to get the same answer. And since it's the same answer, the plot will be the same. Okay, now that I have my function in terms of sines and cosines, find the output, meaning find the equation for that blue line. Well, I can do that using superposition. What superposition says is I have a function that has four terms. I've got a DC term, one rating per second term, two, th and three rating per second terms. That's equal to my function evaluated at DC plus the function at one rating per second, plus the function at two ratings per second, plus your function at three ratings per second. Treat this problem, which is the original one, as four separate problems. Analyze each one separately. And my four separate problems are, going back over here, uh, erase. Once I get x expressed in this form, treat that as four separate problems where this is the first problem, I've got a DC term. This is the second problem. This is a sine wave at one rating per second. The third one's right here. This is the sine waves at two ratings per second. This is the last problem, a sine wave at three ratings per second. And again, I like sine waves. I know what to do with sine waves. If I have a sine wave as the input, I just use phasers, like we did last week. So, uh, treat this like four problems. The first problem is at DC. This is the gain everywhere. All I care about is what's the gain at DC. Here's the input at DC. Output is gain times input. That's the DC term for Y. Now go to one rating per second. S is equal to J1. X is a complex number real parts cosine minus j is sine. This is the gain at one rating per second. Output is gain times input. What that means is the real part is cosine minus j is sine, and this is at one rating per second. Next, solve at two ratings per second. So here's my input, real parts cosine minus j is sine. This is the gain at s equals j2 gain at two ratings per second. Output is gain times input. Gives you a complex number. Real parts cosine minus j is sine, and this is at two ratings per second. Next, repeat at three ratings per second. Here's the gain at three ratings per second. Here's the input at three ratings per second. Output is gain times input. Real parts cosine minus j is sine at three ratings per second. Now my total answer then is the sum of those four. It's the DC plus one plus two plus three of ratings per second. Add them all up, I get Y of T. And that right there is the equation, is the equation for uh, somewhere, the blue line. And if I plot it in MATLAB, and DC term, plus one rating per second, plus two, plus three, plot. That's what I get. Here's your input x. There's the output y. The power of this is that I can now find the output for any periodic input. 
not just sine waves. That's the power of Fourier series. I can ha analyze any circuit, any input. It might take a few terms, but I can solve it. A second thing to note is in theory I have to go out to infinity. In practice you don't. If you notice that x of t tends to have most of the energy at low frequencies, my filter has highest gains at low frequencies, put them all together, then the output has got a strong DC term, strong term at 1 radian per second, 2 gets smaller, 3 gets really small, and so on so on. So in theory you have to go out to infinity. In practice if you just include a couple terms, you get a pretty good approximation for y. So that's Fourier series. It's a concept which is students really struggle with Fourier series, but think of it just as a curve fit. It's just a least squares curve fit like any other curve fit, except in this case my curve fit is, uses sines and cosines as the basis. And the reason I do that is I like sines and cosines. I know what to do with sines and cosines. Once my input is expressed in terms of sines and cosines, I can find the output at each frequency. And that is the significance of Fourier series, um, kind of important aspect in electrical computer engineering. So that's Hoberg set number 11 for ECE 111.